Um, now, like I said, I can't cover everything. Uh, with, there's no way in, in 15, 20 minutes we're going to cover everything about heaven and hell. Uh, so please do, uh, if I don't touch on something, let's talk about it afterwards, either in a discussion or just on a one-to-one. Uh, that would be great if we, could, if we could do that. But I do want to say something uh, about heaven and hell. Uh, I don't know what you believe about God. Uh, I don't know whether uh, you believe that there is a God. Um, but let's just, for argument's sake, this afternoon uh, say that there, there is a God. Uh, and let's assume that this God is the God of Christianity. Uh, that is to say that he is a God of love, as the Bible portrays him to be. Uh, I don't know what you believe about uh, what happens when we die. Um, I don't know whether you believe that we all go to heaven. I don't know, as we've been talking earlier, you believe in limbo or these kinds of things. Uh, but I want you to... to Uh, Take, for argument's sake, what the Bible says about heaven and hell. Uh, I want you to assume that there is such a reality as heaven and there is such a reality as hell. Uh, I want us to take what the Bible says that hell is a place of uh, punishment, a place of eternal punishment uh, for those who do not trust in in Jesus Christ. So I want us to take that for granted, just for argument's sake. And it seems that we've got two views here, then, that are completely contradictory. Uh, On the one hand, we've got a loving God, uh, and on the other hand, we've got the reality of hell. How in the world do these two things fit together? Uh, A loving God cannot send people to hell, surely. How does this even fit together? So, I want us to talk about that for a minute. And I want us to do a little bit of a thought exercise. I want you to imagine that... Uh, you're going to meet the most loving person in the world. I want you to just think of the most loving person in the world. Maybe your mind goes to somebody. Uh, maybe you, you've just got to imagine somebody. But imagine that, that person exists. And, and you're going to meet them. Uh, you get the privilege of spending some time with them. So you're on the train. You're going to meet them. Looking forward to spending time with them. By definition, looking forward to being loved by them. Being in their presence and enjoying them. Uh, And and you're on the train and you you can't wait for that. But then I want you to imagine meeting that same person, the most loving person in the world. Uh, But you're meeting them under slightly different circumstances. You're meeting them because you've done something wrong against them. You've wronged them in in one way or another. Uh, So I want you to imagine you're going to meet them and uh, you've, you've done something not just small. You haven't just let them down in a small way, but you've assaulted their child or you've assaulted their husband or their wife. And all of a sudden, you're not filled with that same sense of excitement at the prospect of meeting this person. Uh, Why not? Well, because you know that when you meet them, you'll meet their anger. You know that when you meet them, they'll be angry with you. Uh, Their anger might not display itself in violence or vengeance, but there'll be a distance between you and that person. Because we know that love and anger are not opposites, don't we? We know that. Um, If God was really a loving God, the objection goes, he would not send people to hell. If God was really a loving God, he would not be angry. We know that love and anger are not opposites, that they can coexist. Imagine that a wife finds out that her husband has been having an affair. And maybe you don't need to think about that in too abstract a way. Maybe you know somebody who's gone through that and you know how heartbreaking an experience it can be. But imagine that the wife finds out that her husband's been unfaithful towards her. And her reaction is simply to just say, don't worry about it, honey. It's fine. Uh, I love you. I accept you. It, it's fine. Really, don't worry about it. Uh, we wouldn't say about that wife, that is an incredibly loving wife. Wow willing to accept her husband unconditionally. We would say, come on, there needs to be a bit more passion here. There needs to be a bit of anger. Because we know that love and anger are not opposites. Uh, In fact, the more intensely you love someone, the more capacity you have to be angry. Um, One one Christian writer uh, writing about this, a woman called uh, Becky Pippin, Uh, She writes in one of her books, Think how we feel when we see someone we love ravaged by unwise actions or relationships. 
Do we respond with benign tolerance as we might towards strangers? Far from it. Anger is not the opposite of love. Hate is. And the final form of hate is indifference. God's wrath, God's anger, is not a cranky explosion, but his settled opposition to the cancer which is eating out the insides of the human race he loves with his whole being. So, for argument's sake, on the one hand, we've got this loving God, and on the other hand, we've got this reality of hell. Complete contradiction, isn't it? Not at all. It is not a contradiction at all. Love and anger are not opposites. And when we see that, we can start to see that a loving God and the idea of hell can coexist. Let me tell you that a loving God and the reality of hell coexisting is a far better reality than the alternatives. Uh, you know what the alternatives are if you believe that there is a God. You either have a God who loves everybody un unconditionally and never gets angry at evil, which as we've seen is no love at all. Or you have a God who is not loving, but hell still exists, and so this God is simply vindictive and takes pleasure about sending people to hell. Neither of those gods is the God of Christianity. Have you found that out yet? Have you considered that the God you think of when you think of God may not be God at all? What if the God who does exist is in fact this God of intense love that the Bible holds out to us. A love that is so pure, it is capable, of righteous and just anger. Uh, when do you want to find out more about that God? So, a loving God would not send people to hell. Fiction. Fiction. It's not a fact. Uh, it can be true. A loving God can send people to hell in his just anger. Now, we can talk a little bit more about hell afterwards if you want to ask any more questions about that. But let me say something about heaven, because we haven't talked about heaven yet. And I, I want to give you one quick fire fiction, and then one quick fire fact, uh, and then wrap up. So one quick fire fiction about heaven uh, is if everything I've been saying is true, if uh, we have a God of love who is capable of just and right anger, then we're only a small step away from seeing that the notion that when, when we die, everybody goes to heaven is a complete fiction. If we have a God who is uh, capable of just anger, yet at the end of the day, when we all die, we all just go to heaven, how does that even fit together? That's a fiction. It can't be true. If God were to say to us all at the end of our lives, uh, like that wife who said to her husband, listen, don't worry about it, it's fine. If that's what God was to say, don't worry about it, come on into heaven, then we would have to say that that's no God of love at all. That's a God of indifference. And not only that, but we'd have to conclude that ultimately, at the end of the day, justice would not be done. There would be no final justice for everything that has gone on in this world, in our lives. Uh, it wouldn't matter whether we lived our lives uh, supporting the poor and feeding the homeless, or whether we lived them oppressing certain people groups and killing innocent people. Because at the end of the day, we would all go to heaven anyway. Uh, it wouldn't matter whether we were Mother Teresa or Adolf Hitler. Uh, there would be no difference. And I don't need to tell you that that doesn't sit well with us, does it? doesn't sit well with us at all. We want justice. The notion that everyone goes to heaven when they die flies in the face of that desire. And it, it gives us license to live however we like, because there are no consequences. And so we have this next apparent contradiction. A God of justice on the one hand, and a God of love on the other hand. How can the two coexist? How can God be both a God of justice and a God of love? You know, the center of the Christian message, at the center of the Christian message is the greatest display of love and justice interwoven. 
The center of the Christian message is not a banner that reads, love wins, God will accept everybody. The center of the Christian message is not a platform with a judge's chair and a sign that reads, this way to hell. The center of the Christian message is a cross. And on that cross hung the Son of God. There we see this majestic display of love and of justice. There we see God's unwavering desire for justice because he gives his Son to pay the penalty for our sins, for all the ways in which we have wronged God. And there we see God's astounding, unparalleled love uh, as we realize that God did not need to do that. He did not need to send his son for us, but he did, out of love. Love and justice, majestically displayed in the cross of Jesus Christ. And so here's the quickfire fact about heaven that I said I'd give you, and then we'll wrap up. The only way to heaven the only way to heaven is to be moved by this display of love and justice and to turn to the person who is hanging there in your place and to trust in him. The only way to heaven is to be moved by God's great love to trust in his son. And so the question that's before us this afternoon is have you been moved by that great sacrifice? Have you been moved by the love of God? Have you turned and trusted in Him? Uh, maybe, maybe you want to find more, find out more about this. Uh, maybe you've been moved enough to think, yeah, I want to find out more. Uh, then I want to encourage you to follow through on that. Uh, there's another event tomorrow, five o'clock here uh, in this same room, and, and come back and, and come along to that event. Uh, come along to church service and, and ask your questions and people will be uh, more than happy to, to answer those. Come along to the CU, speak to someone else in the CU. Uh, grab one of these uncovers, uh, which are uh, here on the front, and I start to read it. That is where you will discover this God of unparalleled love. A God capable, uh, a God of, uh, of such intense love that he is capable of righteous anger, as we've seen. So I encourage you to follow through on that. Uh, immediately, you can follow through on that by asking any questions if you've got any. Uh, so if anybody has any, then fire them away. I'll do my best to field them. And uh, we can talk some more.